Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about mythological tropes. And when doing so, whenever we talk about mythological tropes, we are required by law to bring up Joseph Campbell. Campbell is a towering figure in the field of mythology and mythological research. He read tons and tons of myths and presented a lot of his findings and um, really provides a useful set of structures for thinking about myth. And if you're curious about this topic, his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, is a great place to start. Lots of useful information in there. Campbell has his issues. I, I will not suggest that this is a perfect book, but it is a great starting point for these things. So one of the most important things that Campbell provided is what he calls the hero's journey, also known as the monomyth. This is a set of essentially plot points that Campbell noticed shows up over and over and over in myths throughout the world. Um, to be clear, he is not saying that every myth contains every single one of these 17 items. He's just saying that these all crop up frequently in various myths. And this is interesting to study. Um, so if you look at Odysseus or Beowulf or you know, Hercules, all these sorts of stories tend to repeat these elements over and over again. Uh, a great modern example is Star Wars, particularly Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Uh, George Lucas was very much a student of Joseph Campbell's structures and wove that into Star Wars Episode Four. Um, so this is very useful, but for our purposes, this is a lot of different elements to, to look at. So I actually prefer Phil Cousineau, I think is how you pronounce his name, his version of the hero's journey, which is simplified down to eight steps. So kind of combining and um, you know, condensing a lot of those steps. And again, think of Star Wars Episode Four: The call to adventure, the droids show up on, um, uh, on Tatooine, uh, the road of trials. The vision quest is arguably Luke with the helmet with a blast shield down, learning to use the force for the first time. The boon is the lightsaber. And then all the way down to the end, where Luke proves himself to be skilled at both the mystical force and the technological piloting of a spacecraft in his technological world. So he masters both technology and mystical power to save the day, and that's where the movie ends. Um, so again, a useful lens to look at storytelling. But this is a super robot, or at least a mecha um, presentation, and so we've been talking about super robot, but when you look at this, a lot of these don't show up in super robot shows. There's not really a lot of vision quests or meetings with a goddess in Super Robot shows, you really only see these four steps. And indeed, if you reorganize them in the order they typically happen in a Super Robot show, you'd get this. The Call to Adventure, evil aliens from Planet X attack Earth. The Boon, i.e. the receipt of the mecha by the hero. The Road of Trials, aka episodes 2 through 49. And then the return threshold of the final battle. The hero faces off against the enemies for the last time, and will he defeat them? Spoiler alert. Yes. So, this is what you get in a typical super robot um, story. And it's important to dive into this because why do we have myths to begin with? Like, why do we tell these stories? Why do we dig into these things? Well, a couple of different reasons. Um, myths, among many other things, teach several things. They teach cosmology. This is how the world works. It does not, have, does not have to be literally a creation myth, but it is a cosmology about how we envision the world. J.R.R. Tolkien did not suggest that the events of Lord of the Rings literally happened in the history of Earth. He is not suggesting that the gods and goddesses of Lord of the Rings, you know, really existed. However, that cosmology is structured to explore the question of why evil exists and how it propagates. It is a way of looking at the world, of looking at why evil, how evil. Granted, Lord of the Rings is more than that. What Tolkien did was more than that. I'm not trying to you know, reduce it down to something very simplistic. But, point being, um, the Lord of the Rings pro provides a cosmology, a lens with which to view how the world works. 
right? Myths also teach social values. This is how we should behave, right? Odysseus goes through his trials in the Odyssey and defeats them through the behaviors expected of a good Greek citizen. Honor, uh, self-control, courage, uh, quick-wittedness, etc. and so forth. You know, thoughtfulness, that kind of thing. And I think a great example to show both of these are the old Norse myths of Odin and, and Thor and Loki. I will ask you to set aside the Marvel Cinematic Universe conception of these for a moment. The cosmology of the Norse myths are this. We're all doomed. Everything we make will be wiped away in Ragnarok. All of human civilization, everything we build, will be utterly annihilated. It will all be gone. None of this ultimately matters. But in the meantime, we should behave and we should be wise like Odin, courageous like Thor, clever like Loki. Right? The cosmology, this is how the world works, the social values and cultural values, this is how we should behave. Okay? So what is the cosmology? What are the, what are the values being taught by Super Robot? Well, fundamentally, I think the Mecca is a symbol for what the older generation passes on to the younger generation. Because that's what happens, right? Older father figure passes this on this thing to the younger generation, which I think represents, you know, the, the food and housing and clothing and so forth that the, the parents provide their kids. But also I think it is it is much a much closer analogy and metaphor for education. The older generation gives education to the younger generation, and the younger generation doesn't earn it per se, but they are expected to show up. And I think if you look at how the average 10-year-old views school, as long as they don't like hate school, um, I think this maps pretty darn well. You know, preteens usually enjoy going off to school, big adventure. And so the idea is much like how 10-year-old mecha pilots in mecha series like, enjoy jumping in there and fighting off the bad guys, it maps. You are expected to, even if you don't particularly want to during the day, you still get your pants on and you go to school, right? Even if you don't really particularly want to fight the, giant, the, the evil aliens that day, you still get in your mecha and you go and you defeat them, right? Um, and the ability to learn those things is innate, you know? Um, there are people kind of, you know, teaching you, obviously, but your capacity for, for doing that is central to you, right? Um, and so the fundamental sort of lesson that these shows teach, Super Robot particularly, is work hard and you'll succeed. Show up, do the work, pilot the mecha, solve the quiz problem, and everything will work out at the end. And this is a perfectly good social value to pass on to our kids. A, a perfectly good lesson to say that, hey, do the work and things will probably work out right. It's obviously simplistic, but especially for younger kids, it's a good starting uh, place to say, don't just ignore everything around you, put in the work. Right? Now, <laughs> Real Robot would change all this, but that's the next video.